Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over the optic that you see on the rifle right here. This is the Trijicon MRO Patrol. So the MRO has been out, I guess, for almost two years now as it came out at shot a couple years ago. And they've been on the street and folks have been getting field data on them for a while. This one here has been out for probably, at least as of this video, nine, 10 months this. So it's sort of the newest MRO model, at least that I'm aware of anyway. So what we're gonna do today is go over this actual optic, my experience with it, the features of it, what makes it different than a standard MRO, uh, is it worth it? Uh, let the dogs take a look at it, all of that stuff. So that's what's coming up next. We'll let them check it out and then we'll come back in and get into those features. to do a review on the MRO patrol I think we sort of have to compare it to the MRO because for a lot of people I think that's going to be the biggest competitor so we'll sort of go piece by piece by that and uh, sort of tackle the additions that we have here on the MRO patrol and then of course what comes with all of the MROs after that so first and foremost the uh, MRO patrols just like some of the MROs do come with mounts. However, the mounts that come on these are different than the ones that would come on the MROs. So um, all of the MRO patrols are gonna have this pseudo quick detach mount. It's not a quick detach in terms of throwing a lever, but basically it's this spring loaded piece here as you guys can see when it's backed all the way out. It will uh, use spring tension to snap over the 1913 rail and then at this point you can just tighten it down. And uh, these are rated to return to zero, absolutely they say. However, I tested it um, on a couple different rifles. I didn't see a difference in terms of point of impact at 100 yards. And beyond that, sometimes uh, the dot makes more of a difference than the uh, mountain where it's zeroed at. But it's a 7075 T6 aluminum mount, so very high quality stuff. I actually went to put some uh, Loctite on the mount screws when it came in, and I found that they actually had a thread locker on there. So that is a very good thing, at least in my opinion. I am a Loctite junkie, and um, it was already on there, so that was certainly a good thing. Whereas the MRO mounts that come with it, standard from Trijicon, they're not QD. They're not bad mounts at all, um, but they're not QD. And of course, here we have the American Defense mount on this one. And uh, if you want, you know, the QD with the standard MRO, you're going to have to go aftermarket, and that's going to add a little bit of cost to it, um, just like it would here with the MRO Patrol. Before moving on, I should also point out that the MRO Patrol, just like the MRO, comes with either no mount, uh, absolute co-witness mount for the uh, AR-15s, lower one-third mount, which is what we have here, and I believe it also has a low mount option, just like the MRO. So there are some options out there. Again, these ones are just going to be quick to attach. And the next point that we're going to get to is these flip caps. So you guys can see they are not see-through. However, they do snap in place and flip open very easily, just like that. And both of them do. They have a good pop to them, as you guys can probably hear there. Of course, we do not have any of those that come standard on the MRO. And one thing I should point out here really quickly um, is that uh, talking to Shurjikon, I was trying to get sort of the list of the differences for this video. And one thing that they pointed out uh, when I called was that the bodies itself of the actual MRO and the MRO patrol are different. So you can't take an MRO and turn it into an MRO patrol. You also can't take an MRO patrol and strip everything off and make it an MRO. And we'll kind of show you that here in a little bit more detail in just a second, but just something to point out there. So we do get these flip caps that come with it. They of course are removable. This one on the rear is very tough to remove. I will remove it though for you guys, but I'm telling you it snaps and it's kind of a beast um, to get out. But there it is and you guys can see those are the actual covers themselves. And one thing that's nice about it in terms of durability, for those of you guys who really like that, which I am a fan of as well, is that the MRO Patrol has this extra ring on there, which is the mount uh, that the MRO itself doesn't have. And that's just gonna give you a little bit more impact resistance, uh, especially when combined, of course, with the cap than you'd have here on the MRO. It's sort of just beefier. And of course, that is an all aluminum anodized part as well. Up front here on the MRO Patrol, we have a kill flash. And this kill flash is different than some out there. So we'll get into that here. But before we do, uh, what are kill flashes used for? Well, kill flashes are a two-way device. So they do um, reduce the signature out front, being projected out front. A lot of red dot sites, you guys might be able to see a little bit here. You can also see my lights up there and the glare on the lens. But a lot of them will put off like a red glint like that one will. Or if somebody is looking at you and your uh, optic is oriented at them, they will see um, some 
light coming out the front, particularly if it, they're using night vision optics. So the kill flash is designed to eliminate that, or at least reduce it anyway. It's gonna reduce the signature coming out front, both under nods, as well as the glare that we just talked about. Now, one thing it does is it also reduces the glare as you look through it. So when you look through the optics, sometimes you can get glare on really, really bright sunny days, and it will cut down on that. Now, the down, that's the advantage for the shooter. The downside of that is that it will darken the image a little bit um, as the shooter perceives it. So, um, of course, you have less light coming through, so that sort of only makes sense now. One thing I want to compare it to uh, versus some of the others out there, and I don't know why this is, but, you know, for years in the military, I used the Aimpoint, uh, the M68, and the kill flash on that compared to this was way more dim and way more obtrusive when you tried to look through it. And I don't know if it's just a redesign of the kill flash itself, but I don't notice it anywhere near as much on the MRO Patrol like we did on the old M68. So if any of you guys have had the same experience and you have theories on why that is, feel free down below to post. I don't really know why, but it is something I noticed. Now that the uh, kill flash does screw off, so you can see there, it does come right off. And also we should point out that this is also an anodized aluminum part on there, which is certainly nice. It's not plastic or anything like that. And this ring here out front, just like the ring on the back, is built into the optic body. You cannot remove it, it does not come off, and it does have threads on the inside where the kill flash goes into. You guys can see behind that kill flash is that red glint, just like you'd see on the standard MRO. Now we'll go over some of the things that are similar on the MRO and MRO Patrol for those of you guys who have never used this optic nor ever looked into it, which I'm sure some of you watching this video fall into that category. So first off, it is Trigicon quality mil spec stuff. So you're gonna get a Forge 7075 aluminum uh, housing, one piece housing, and it's very strong. It's very, very durable. It's the same type of housing material that's used on the Trigicon ACOG, which is a legend in terms of durability. It has that weird finish on there that sort of feels rubberized, but sort of feels metal. I have no idea what that is, um, but it's very durable and corrosion resistant as well. You guys can see the markings here on the sides. Um, one thing to point out is that uh, there was a scandal years back, I'm sure some of you guys remember it, where the uh, government basically had to stop using these little inscriptions on there, which are Bible verses that Trigicon puts on a lot of their optics. Um, now with the MRO Patrol, you can get it with or without. So that is up to you, but uh, the military issued ACOGs had to stop using that. But just pointing that out there for those of you guys who are Christians and want that on there, it is an option for you on the MRO Patrol. It's also an option if you don't want it. So whichever way you want it, that's just fine. Aside from the durability of it, the biggest selling point for the MRO for me is the fact that you can set it and leave it and forget it. So set it and forget it like a 90s infomercial. So what I mean by that is that on setting three, which we have it on right now, you, the battery will last five years according to Trichicon. Now, of course, if you're out in cold climates, it will last a little bit less. If you're out in really warm climates, it'll last a little bit more, but that is what it's rated for. Now, it has multiple different settings. You guys can see here on the right side of the optic, these are your night vision settings, and then that right there is going to be the in-between setting on the dot, and then over here, you go into your daylight visible settings. Now, in all fairness, if you're inside, you can actually see the two if you look through it with your eye. At least I can anyway on both of my MROs, but on setting three, um, in most outdoor conditions, you'll be able to see it, but on really bright sunny days, in my experience, you're going to want to bump it up. Now, that is with any of the MROs. Again, like we talked about with the MRO Patrol with that kill flash on the front. Some people like to bump it up one setting from what they would normally keep their MROs on just due to that reduced amount of um, light coming through the front. So that is the battery life. Again, a huge selling point for me. Now, one thing I also like about the design is that the windage and elevation turrets are accessible yet protected. So you guys can see there on the side, one click equals half an MOA. So about a half inch at 100 yards for those that don't know. And what's also nice about it is that, pop that off again, from the shooter's perspective, as you're dialing it in, you can see which way you're moving. Now, I've mentioned this in several scope reviews and some people kind of laugh at it, but if you zero a lot of optics like I do, it's very helpful and kind of annoying when optics don't have it. So I do like that as well. And uh, the clicks are very audible, very crisp, exactly what you'd expect from a Trigicon optic. So no issues at all there when dialing it in. One comment I got a lot on social media when posting about the MRO Patrol was the size of it. A lot of people said it looked really big. Um, 
it kind of is big, but I guess it depends what you're comparing it to. So the actual optic itself only weighs 5.1 ounces and the mount itself weighs 1.8 ounce on my scale. So you're coming in just under seven ounces for the entire package, which is pretty good um, compared to the standard MRO. Yeah, it's a little bit more, but compared to something like this bad boy right here, which is sort of the, the king of the sub $500 red dot world, the Aimpoint Patrol for many years. Um, it's definitely lighter and smaller. You guys can see there just sort of how it stacks up in terms of size with that little guy there. So, or not little guy rather, but it still retains all the features like we talked about of the standard MRO. You know, it has longer battery life like we talked about. It also has uh, the submersibility. You can take this thing down to 100 meters underwater. So those of you guys who want to go scuba diving with your rifles, you are in luck here. We hit most of the high points, but there's a couple things I wanted to point out before wrapping it up. So the MRO itself has been out for a couple years, like we mentioned, and uh, really the only problems I've ever heard of anyone having with them is that on the initial batch, when they first came out, some folks had the battery terminals breaking off, but it seems Trigicon's fixed that. they have I haven't heard of it for at least a year now, so it seems like all the new batches are good to go in terms of that, so that's a good thing. Um, other concerns that folks have about the MROs, one is that people say that there is a blue tint when you look through it, and that's absolutely true. There is a blue tint when you look through it. Um, why you see that is because of the coatings that Trigicon puts on the lenses. And Trigicon puts those coating on the lenses so that it gives you good light transmission, good durability, like we talked about, impact resistance. All that stuff goes into the lenses, but the real big one that is resulting in that blue that you see there is the coatings they put on there to give you really good contrast. So it absolutely does that. Uh, the MRO is as good as any red dot out there on the market, at least that I've used to date, in terms of contrast. So why would that be important, right? Let's say you're out hunting and you have your MRO and you see what you think is a deer in the wood line 150 yards away. With good contrast, you can tell if it's a deer or not. With bad contrast, it might be a bunch of sticks and might be a stump and not a deer. The contrast is what allows you to see that, the differences between the objects, the object you're looking at and the objects around it. So it does very well in that category. The, the sort of the consequence of that or the negative of that, that some people perceive is that slight blue tint. So if the blue tint bothers you, don't know what to tell you, it's there. So um, another thing people say about the MRO is that it has a wide field of view compared to other red dots. Now there is some truth to that due to the 25 millimeter lens out front and the different shape that you see of it. Um, that said, um, field of view is very subjective when we're talking about red dots because if you're firing with both eyes open, you obviously have an unlimited field of view. Now your field of view through the optic may be bigger than some others, but again, field of view outside of it might not be any different because if you're using both eyes, it's the same. So just wanted to address that there for some of you guys that really think that's a huge thing. And then one other thing is the magnification issue. Some folks said that this one has sort of a 1.05-ish magnification, at least the original MROs do. When I look through mine, I can't see that at all. The only thing I can see on some of the original ones is a little bit of edge distortion right on the edge. And that, again, is because of the lens shape that you see when it goes through. So again, that's sort of a consequence of having the wider field of view through your shooting eye. And um, from what I understand, the new ones that are coming out now, that is absolutely not an issue and they have rectified it because of consumer demands for it. So seems that they solved that as well. Now, the other things that we want to talk about, of course, is always going to be price with the MROs. Now, this one adds a bunch of features, a bunch of accessories that you could buy separately for the original MRO that would tack on some price. So the MSRP on this one's about $300 more than your standard MRO. And uh, it's going to run you, if you look around on the street, 650 to 780 depending on the mounts and where you get it and time of year and all that stuff. And I think the MSRP on it's like 919 so you're definitely getting below that, but it's above what you pay for an MRO for sure. And just whether that's worth it to you depends on the feature set that we talked about. But the MRO, both the actual original MRO and the MRO Patrol, my opinion, are duty-ready optics. I would absolutely trust them with any of my home defense, if I was a police officer, any of my patrol, if I was a military guy, any of my patrol optics, uh, or patrol rifles anyway, I should say. Um, they seem to, like I said, they had that one issue and that was it. Other than that, they've been issue free in my experience. So if you guys have any questions about the MRO Patrol, you can always post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. We just crossed over 200,000 subscribers. I truly appreciate it. And we hope to see all of you in the next video.